So just by isolating the column, we were able to get it to propagate and fail. Now, this is, you know, we are cutting a crust, which does jeopardize some of the integrity of, and below it is this three, two to three mil fa facets that are really advanced. They have striations in them um, and very weak grains. And so once we start to get more wind, if we do get more snow and a slab does get put on top of this, we may start be looking at our next persistent slab problem closer to the surface. So we just transitioned. We're over onto a south aspect now. And what is different is obviously our snowpack went through a lot of melt free cycles over the last month. So below this foot of new snow, this, the snowpack is really stout. There is not, um, the, the weak layers just didn't sit around and weren't able to develop. Versus on the north aspects, we just had a period of time where we developed that thin breakable temperature crust but the snow that was on the surface sat around and faceted where what's below this is hard, firm, and really a pretty good looking snowpack. What will be interesting is, you know, now that we're transitioning into spring is we have a foot of pretty low density blower snow is when we do see warm temperatures or the sun starts to hit it, it's gonna run far and fast as wet loose on this crust. But for right now, my confidence is a lot higher being on south aspects versus north aspects, whether it's new um, instabilities or our old persistent weak layer. We decided to stick to southerly facing slopes to reduce the chances of triggering a much larger persistent slab avalanche. In the middle elevation band and just near 6,500 feet, we ended up triggering a number of small storm slabs. These slabs were harmless in size, but a good clue of what is yet to come with increasing storm totals in a building slab.